I know it might be hard to imagine yourself connected to all these other lands across the plain. But Managa, you are connected to all these lands across the plain. <laughs> David Ramsey map, you know, gives us a lot of drop. Tara, <laughs> more land. And they got their images on everything, but don't get it twisted. You know how they do. <laughs> you know how they do, man. Yeah, I don't know, man. Levante, huh? Hey. So when we talk about Australia's or Antarctica, when I, I know you used to Cali, you know, Detroit and Wisconsin, San Diego, Arkansas, <laughs> Canada and the, and the UK. We're fighting all these wars more and more. They're marring, they're marring past the Azores. All this is Atlantis. The spots that's left. I don't know. I mean, this is why we're doing the research. But they were trying to lock up the seaways for a minute, this Mar del Norte. And I mean, look, they finally got out of here, right? They got out of here. This was their great sea. Slipped right through the pillars of Hercules. Through the Straits of Gibraltar. Just as confident you can be that all these place names in Spain, Aragon and Castilla and all this is real, my not, right? Africa or Barbaria. <laughs> yeah, man. Barbaria or Morocco, you know. The barber, the barber. Just as you can, you know, be as confident in your negri, negra, <laughs> you know. I mean, where would Nigeria be? Uh, yeah, man. But, you know, all this is supposed to be real spill, right? So just as you are confident in all this real spillness, you got to be confident in all this realness. Terra Vista. And this is a, this is that land you see when you see those, um, you know, maps of the reflection of the moon and, you know, how it's reflecting all these extra lands. You know, this is Terra Vista. This is all that extra land that the moon is reflecting. Oh, we ran right into the Grand Preston. Hey, what it do, Preston, John? We're going to talk about you, man, why they put you with one eye, you know, all dim like. Because to the Muslim in the Quran, they have a Dajjal, you know, who has this one eyed monster they try to make. Him. But they're just trying to refer to the Preston that they have to pay tribute to. That's their. Dijon, <laughs> that's King David, man. He's the anti there Christ. They're anti their anointed. He's holding down all these lands across the plain. Where they got animals popping off and everything. And this is supposed to be Antarctica, man. So what y'all think when these presidents go and they have to be confirmed outside the walls? I mean, are these people that are holding down stretches of land outside the walls, conquered, colonizing? 
They got different animals, different species, and they got gateways to get out. But now we're just thinking about an ice wall, right? Mar Australia. Gil Shiato, something like that. But Managa, Australia means southerly, right? And then on the so-called flat earth orientation and anything that's going outward is going in the southerly direction. Anything that's going inward towards that northern, you know, magnetic pole where the center is the north. The center is the north. Outside of that is the south. <laughs> going going outward is south, you know what I'm saying? Going clockwise and counterclockwise would be east and west. Clockwise and counterclockwise. Now that's orientation, uh, you know what I'm saying, in the ether. You know what I'm saying? On the maps, uh, up, down, left, right, right? So, you know, when it says Australia, they're just talking about south, man, and glaciado, they're talking about glaciers. I don't, I don't know. But, you know, I'm just saying, man, there's so much more land. <laughs> this don't fit on your ball, right? Your ball consists of just these known lands that you think you know. And you still don't know these lands. You still don't know these waters. We still getting a drop in real time, man. We, we still tune in there in real time. So don't act like we know what we don't know. What we don't know, we literally don't know but what it looked like for show sure was that there are more worlds you know what i mean and even beyond these worlds there are more worlds man you know meditate on this man we're gonna i'm gonna do a nice little tour of this map to these beautiful flutes <laughs> surfing away with you hey welcome to the 95th installment of the Preston John investigation. And we pushed it hard, man. And I'm gonna get caught up with a lot of things. I got Nagas ordering packs, Preston packs, and and super bundles and you know, reconstruction packs and my packs. So I'm gonna make sure we get all these out this week and you know, just get as much as done. You know, get get back to my Nagas that's been given, you know, back to the tribe. And I appreciate y'all, man. And the water for your patience, all these emails I gotta catch up to. I got y'all, but I've been going hard. Cause I gotta go, you know, all the way in, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, we gotta hit this press to 100. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Love the five eyes, mine. So, we on a man and hey, out to the tribe, the waterfall, the support, and hey, how have you been giving us, man? So, hey, we surfing the wave in real time, man. We in battle time. So imagine your ancestors, man. You know. These extra lands, this extra tar that they knew, you know, that we, for some reason, have lost all memory of. Fuego. Wow. 
to as far as all this stuff seems is really close, you know, especially when you got dragons or if you got a boat. <laughs> you got your dragons popping like the press to do and, you know, that are, you know, really uh, all over the place. And, you know, some have talked about this being what they call Tiamat or the great dragon, you know, like the aura Boreal or something like that, you know, the snake eating its tail, this whole flow, this whole outer spine or wall is a dragon some say man and go on our ig man they talking about a dragon head they're finding right around like huge dragon head around this you know area oh no i think it's uh yeah around this area where antarctica or australia is, is pretty much touching argentina or uh, chile you know all that we're looking for the san Banyan river yeah i mean we're never taking our foot off of that uh that search um some say it's where asia meets antarctica so are they talking about this asia here you know this is a, a meeting spot you know we're talking about you know in asia around here but you know where does it meet antarctica we got to go you know searching around it's really one area <laughs> Uh, most of these maps that you can literally walk to Antarctica, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, there's other areas, you know, like the tip of Africa here, South Africa, but, you know, was this heavily guarded? You know, we know they got their Antarctic Treaty to guard us or, to, you know, to, to keep us away. <laughs> but... Hawa got his own system, you know, in place to, go, you know, guard against sacred and secret areas, you know what I'm saying? So they got all these so-called monsters and sea monsters, and could they get past it? You know, I don't know. Apparently they got past a few places. Yeah, I mean, this is crazy, right? Because now you got the ant arc. Uh, treaty 1957 <laughs> so these jabronis came and they say hey man look here man boss hey, hey, ain't nothing to see here boss and we gotta make sure that they don't see shit right so I know it looks like we're at war but let's all come together to guard what matters most the wall let's all come together to guard the wall i mean not to guard the wall for our behalf or on our behalf you know to guard the wall uh on their behalf you know they need to they had to seize the perimeter you know when the popo they on the move and they trying to clamp down on the area whatever they got to seize the perimeter set up a perimeter First thing they do is set up a perimeter. Uh, give you a perimeter. Uh, Antarctic Treaty. Antarctic Treaty was signed in Washington on the 1st of December, 1959. 1959. By the 12 countries whose scientists have been active in and around Antarctica during the international geophysical war what <laughs> geophysical war 1957 so they coming out of um the ice age now you know they're like yo this stuff is going to be melting we're starting to see some things we haven't seen whoa there's more land i mean go get that admiral burr interview talking about finding another piece of land the size of america past the known pole points go get that if I'm a DOG in any world beyond a pole, showing the naval expeditions in these 50s and 60s and all that, and before in the 20s and 30s, finding thousands, thousands of miles more land that, than you could fit in your ball. They say, well, Africa's the biggest Africa. It ain't bigger than what's we seeing in this Antarctic, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Is Africa bigger than this? Terra Vista, man? Huh? 
Is Africa bigger than uh, all this Terra Vista? Is Africa bigger than all this Terra Vista that the press is holding down over here? Managa, they're just showing you a a snippet. If they showed you everything, it's going to keep going and keep going and keep going and keep going and keep going. So with the press is holding down, this is just a snippet. It's just a representation, you know what I'm saying, with these other jabronis are out here you know hijacking you know what i'm saying it's just more worlds are these you know some of the custodians that you know love to dizzle fitty <laughs> we were uh, reading about these custodians you know what i'm saying some flat drops so i'm not gonna get too flat drop heavy but i want to show you that it all correlates you know all this stuff comes together a lot of these names, you know, you never heard about, like they're mystical names. And of course, I think they're iconoclastic. They're putting their images on all these people. You know what I'm saying? This could be a brother like, we, you know, come on now. You know what I'm saying? But they can't show, they can't show a picture of a bunch of Nagas. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They, they can't show you dominating like that. They're going to give you the press to it because they have to. They have to. They have to admit that this is a knock, right? They have to admit he's an Ethiopian and all this stuff like that. See, Ethiopia. But which one? Man, I wish I could speak with this Latin or something, man. I don't know, man. But somebody let me know if you can translate this, man. I want to know what that said. And all this, man, like, they saying a lot. I know they saying a lot. I know they're saying a lot, man. They're saying a whole lot over here, man. I think I see Dragon somewhere, man. <laughs> but yeah, you know, so they can't they can't say all these are Nagas. But we know it's a more and more war. So they're gonna give you the, they're gonna give you their images. They're gonna give you a big load of them. You know what I mean? And we got the we got to decipher. Imagine them giving you a bunch of melanated noggins outside of here. You, that's going to blow the whole cap off of everything, man. Because <laughs> these was even noggins. Even these was noggins. I don't know who this is, man. This is kind of a creeper out here, man. A little creeper. Bro. I don't know what's going on. Man. Some creepy people are on this map. <laughs> then you got the middle. Right, the North Pole. Even Admiral Byrd said there's more land here. All this is land, and it ain't no cap on it either, man. This is not ice. This is land where X marks the spot. So I'm not going to get too flat drive heavy, but this is super heavyweight. Five Eyes done told us this. Super heavyweight. Yeah, man. So imagine your ancestors connecting to all these lands, man. Don't get, you know, caught up in thinking that you just from here, okay? No offense to our Ama and <laughs> this particular part of Ama's body. We love it. But to tell all these Nagas over here, <laughs> that they just come from here and can't come from here or here is absolutely asinine. You should be ashamed of yourselves, man. You should think bigger of yourselves, man, that you're not just spiraling out of one spot on Ama. This is Ama, ancient Ama. There's multiple creation stories. The Nagas over here say they come from over here. But now you got to make these people over here, somebody else, so that they don't say they come from over here. The so-called Indian today ain't going to say they from Africa. But you're the real Indian. In India superior, man, right? <laughs> I mean, you're, you're holding down Ania. You're holding down the Ania Regnum, right? You're holding down Quivera, right? Quivera. Regna. 
You're holding this down, man. You're holding it up. This is America. <laughs> hey, we just talk about America, man. You know we love our map drop. David Ramsey, man, this is a this is a banger. You know what I'm saying? And we got so much, and you know, we don't we don't take our time with enough of these maps, man. But you see how amazing it is. I mean, what's if that's Annie, uh all right, hold up, man. My orientation. South America, North America. Okay. Annie, uh, right. What's this? <laughs> Hawaii? Like, <laughs> what's going on over here, man? What's over here, boss? Can say. Can say. I heard about this can say. Mangi. Okay. That's that. That's Ania. Uh-huh. So they be talking about Ania on the map. Ania. Okay. I mean, where's the San Benya? So as you see, man, objects in the mirror <laughs> might be closer than what they appear. And, you know, we impressed her 95, man. So, you know, we can definitely Take your time and enjoy what we got. China, Kana, connected through the Anya. What's over here, man? Y'all let me know, man. This is just more terror, more land. Why can't Nagas come from over here, man? <laughs> All right, man. So just imagine yourself connected, fully connected, fully connected. We talk Antarctica. We're talking about the full connection, the Tarzanta, the Southern Lee, right? The, the Australia's, the Phoenicia, right? Phoenicia. So we just saw that perspective. You know, now we can zoom in on that perspective and say, whoa. And, you know, this is a different type of, you know, the, the proportions are way different. Africa here is way smaller than what they're trying to give you, a, show you a proportion, you know, or, you know, however much more land it is, it makes this plus this stuff look small. You know what I'm saying? This stuff looks minute when you really start to pan out even more, you know, the Tarazant. So why couldn't our people be in Antarctica? You know, I say all that to say. The spell and the brainwash will keep having you push out the idea of your people being in Antarctica, popping off. And we trying to get you, you know, back in the flow, you know, back in the realization that you've been popping off. And this is not by accident that it says holy land here and that it's connected to the vortex that's right here, you know, near this Chile, Argentina, South America connection. Because this is the spot, the only spot that you can damn near walk to, <laughs> right? So it makes sense that our people, you know, our Prestas, our, our uh, Shebas and Khalifas have connectivity from Peru, you know what I mean? Where you can just take a river straight through, <laughs> you know, all the way to the southerly direction. It's the same boat you would take to get from here to here. You can take from get to here to here, man. You're not going extra far to get to Antarctica. That's not extra far. No, you're, you're, you're just cutting through South America, right? It's not extra far. So our people been set up. So the fact that it's all ice now, we really got to focus on this magic, man. This spell, we've been saying it for a long time. Is this just a spell, like a matrix? Do we got Naga still popping off? You know, is it just... You know what I mean? You know, what's going on with this treaty that's defending, you know, uh, against us? You know what I'm saying? This is defense for them. This is defense on their behalf, this treaty. Antarctic Treaty signed in Washington, December 1st, 1959, by 12 countries whose scientists have been active in and around Antarctica during the international geophysical year 
1957, 58. It entered into force in 1961 and has been acceded to by many other nations. The total number of parties to the treaty is now 54. So it started with the 12 main countries, including, you know, this one, you know, or not even countries, man. You can't even give them country corporations, you know, however you want to call it, um, you know, colonizing corporations, custodian corporations, landlords, you know, that, you know, you know, what I'm talking about hijack. And it started with 12. Now it's 54 and their alliance. When we talk about treaties like treaties of Fort Wayne or a treaty of peace and friendship. The treaty of Antarctic Antarctic treaty goes right hand in hand with all this stuff. Because this is after they finally got a hold, you know, on the more and more war. You know, they, they finally felt confident, right? Because they've been at war 93% of the time, right? Starting, in, you know, of course, well before this, but this is a, a, a new checkpoint because we was already fighting before this, you know what I'm saying? So they're just picking it up here for this corporation. So they can tally up for this corporation, okay? They put, they plant their flag on all these knockers. See, you see all these, this is bodies. This is not a mountain. These are bodies. These are bodies, all right? So by the time they get to the 50s, man, they done fought through the banana wars, man, <laughs> the Mexican, Philippines, which we got are all our people, all our Nagas. Philippine, 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 right? So now they're expanding to these other islands, you know. They done took down Kamahamaha, Hawaii, all that, the Philippines. They hijack and offer. They, they get to their Cold War situation, right? And during the Cold War, still Philippine War. So the Cold War, still Philippine War, and that leads into the Korea, Vietnam. You see how this is happening? World War II, where's this taking place? For real, for real. This is still Indian Wars because they're just coming out of Indian Wars. They're still fighting banana wars. No major wars means that they're just working on some treaties. World War II is the same as the banana wars, man, which is the same as the Indian Wars, Mexican Wars, Seminole Creek, Shikamaku. Tukumsa, shooting star, dragon. Same dragon wars is what they bomb in World War I, World War II. They still bombing dragons. They dropping nukes. They bombing dragons. Nagasaki, Nagasaki, man. They bombing dragons, man. Vietnam, look at all this. Now we see what it's really about. This has to be about, they have to. What, they switch up their enemies and say, okay, cool. Now we're going to have these new enemies. No, these are, have to be about the Nagas in, the, in, 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 in Vietnam, man. You know, all these islands, all these Asians, they're just colonizing. Then they say, well, let's go to the Middle East. <laughs> let's go to the Gulf. Let's go to Iraq. Then they make up that, you know, weapons of mass, yada, yada. Nothing's ever proven to this day. No one could question it. It was the biggest, whatever, you know what I mean? So, but they went in and destroyed what they had to destroy. Afghan, they just talking Jeremiah, man. They just talking Arab proper, man, that they're at, <laughs> after. You know, that's the terror for them, Arab proper. We got that, man. We surfing the wave. It's Preston 95, man. Congrats to the cons. Man, so... Well, we got 1950s, now they're in Vietnam, okay. When they are finally getting through these indigenous wars from Mexico to the Philippines, so-called Korea, all this, which is still Philippines, <laughs> which is still Nagas. Now they're like, all right, uh, because since the 20s, they already knew that more land was beyond the pole. So they already, you know, Admiral Byrd and then was already, you know, F. Amadeo Giannini was already setting up shop, doing all these tests, showing the real orientation. They do the treaty in 1959. 
1957. Started with 12 countries, right? In the geophysical year 1957, that article shall be used for peaceful purposes. You have to say who's peace? What's your definition of peace? Is peace to you doing whatever you want to do and we can't benefit? You got to keep your foot on our neck. That's your peace. But that's funny because our shalom means we're devouring your hijack frequency because we can't be in shalom unless we subdue your hijack frequency you know what i'm saying we can't let a parasite run around rampant putting their images all over the place with their powers that's not peace so our peace ain't your peace your peace ain't our peace so their peace is the same peace uh, peace and friendship, treaties of peace and friendship, but we're just talking about the Antarctic Treaty. Peaceful purposes is alluding to the Treaty of Peace and Friendship, <laughs> the same covenant, freedom of scientific investigation, right? Anything in the name of science. We can invade any country in the name of science. Investigation means invasion. So they want the freedom to invade Antarctica together as a treaty. And let me point out, like my nag has been pointing out, this treaty has never been broken, halted nothing. No matter how much war, war, cold war is going on, they're not at war with each other. They can't be, they don't have the numbers to be when they're at war with you the whole damn time. <laughs> I'm just trying to tell you. When did they have time to be at war with each other? Oh, American Revolutionary War. British whites versus American whites. Huh? They're too busy fighting you. They can't fight each other and win. They need you to fight each other so they can win. They need the Choctaw to fight the creek. They need the Chickasaw to fight the Seminole. This is what they need. So when we bring all this information out, it's not so that we can start a new season of hatred and more and more war. We just have to see clearly that we're still in it. We got invaded by the same energies. They didn't switch up this Vietnam energy it's the same energy that rolled up against the Kumsay in 1812. That's the same Vietnam energy. Well, you should be a patriarch. You should swear allegiance to your country. Put your right arm over your chest bone. Pledge allegiance to our flag. Did, did the Kumsay pledge allegiance to your flag? I'm sorry. Was he from Africa? Or is this a Shikamagua? You didn't have time to fight each other, fool. No American Revolution. <laughs> you had time to treaty up against Israel right here in Israel. And all the surrounding areas were Ofer and all this gold is connected to cities of gold where Lemuria still connects. Move. Atlantis, huh? World War II was still about you. Cold War was still about you, huh? No, we at war with China now. Nope, still about you. Korea, still about you. Covert War, Guatemala, you know that's about you. You know that's about you. <laughs> A Guatemala. Vietnam, all this is just like Chicamaba. Cold War, proxy, and I have, come on, CIA proxy war. <laughs> About you, man. All right, so. Treaty. Never been broken treaty. Among the signatories. Well, 
back to Act Two, scientific invasion of Antarctica, cooperation towards that end. So they cooperate. They make one covenant, right? One consent shall continue forever, right? Scientific observations and results from Antarctica shall be exchanged and made freely available. <laughs> freely. Not freely to you, my Laga, to each other. To each other that's involved in the treaty. More gold, more land. Freely we have to tell each other about it. We are all going to invade different areas because there's so many areas to invade when it comes to Antarctica. There's so much land, you know. Whatever we find, we'll let you know about it. Whoever we find, we'll let you know. Well, we'll let each other know. <laughs> More gold, of course. All ice, hell nah. Are we under a spell? Well, it's a combination. Most of all, we're coming out of our own ice age in our Ruach. We're coming out of a deep sleep, a deep slumber. To forget your connection to the whole, to forget about your oppressor. Why they got to put them on the map, son? <laughs> Outside the wall, son. <laughs> yeah, man, you got to be under a Ruach Tardy, ma. But they made a treaty. Among the signatories of the treaty were seven countries. Argentina. Well, you have to put Argentina in. <laughs> right? Argentina is right there, popping off. So they have to set up shop right there in Argentina. This is letting you know. They had to set up shop with all these neighboring spots because they had to, you know, it, it was usable militarily it was usable you know what i'm saying just for them to function they had to bring them all in right so argentina australia <laughs> chile all right france was all up in it new zealand norway and the uk all right so these were the seven countries that were among i guess the first signatories with territorial claims sometimes overlapping wait a minute <clears throat> how can we have territory with something that's supposed to be just freely investigating for peaceful purposes only you only start talking territorial claims when you are doing more of a military invasion you know <laughs> military territory claims free peaceful purpose investigation you're not trying to claim anything you just investigate if i go to the amazon forest you know what i mean i'm not trying to claim the amazon forest i'm just looking around for new species why do i need a territory oh well we, we're going to be only in this territory now they're working together boss they have to they can't be separate and survive <laughs> not the hijack the parasite over there is the parasite over here and the same parasite that Takum say is trying to tell Push Mataha, yo, we got to come together for this. You know, if, if, if Tech really felt that Push was pure evil, if he felt the Choctaw and the Chickasaw and the Muscogee or whoever were pure evil, why would he try to tribe up with you? Why would he try to bring you in? So I don't believe that, oh, they, you know, all in the heart bone had this evil ploy to take down the house of Judah, you know, to take down the house of Jacob. Nah. But there was inward covetous when it came to the power, you know what I'm saying, when it came to the cons. And the cons that were calling the shots 
felt like they had a better shot at preserving their families, preserving their safety, and getting back, <laughs> you know, at the Kumse and the, and the, you know, really entire house, you know what I'm saying, that they felt, you know, may have had to drop on them, you know what I'm saying? So I don't know. We don't know. This is what we're investigating, but territorial claims ain't about no peaceful purposes, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes overlapping, well, here we go. What did Admiral Byrd say? It might be, it won't be peaceful for long, he said, when everybody wanted. it. Other countries do not recognize any claims. The U.S. and Russia maintain a basis of claim, quote unquote, all positions are explicitly protected in Article 4, which preserves the status quo. No acts or activities taking place while the, the present treaty is in force shall constitute a basis for asserting, supporting, or denying a claim to territorial sovereignty. That don't sound like no peaceful purpose. To have territorial sovereignty, typically it comes with extinction, genocide, or just a whole lot of war, going back to that Joshua flow. That's what it was all about for the creator. He was marking out the lands, carving out the lands for the tribes of Israel, whose land it is by birthright from the creator, from the, it's our lot. The promised land is for Abraham's descendants, is for Isaac's descendants, it's for Jacob's descendants. It's for the cold keepers. No new claim. We'll back it up. They're talking about sovereignty, territorial sovereignty in Antarctica or any rights of sovereignty in Antarctica. No new claim or enlargement of any existing, existing claim to territorial sovereignty in Antarctica shall be asserted while the present treaty is in force. To, to promote the objectives and ensure the observance of the provisions of the treaty, all areas of Antarctica, including all stations, installations, and equipment within those areas shall be open at all times to inspection. Yeah, yeah, we don't want you setting up no nukes, uh, France and Norway. <laughs> yeah, man, well, they gotta, they gotta guard against something, man. Because for some reason, these Nagas, these copper Nagas, these copper Indians, the true Americans, the lost tribes of Israel, headed by Preston John, these Nagas get even more swarthy, even more melanated the further you get out. It might sound crazy because you think it's just icy ice, ice baby. <laughs> but maybe they got our mind bones going crazy. Maybe we're just talking about more Tara Zonta. They had to make a treaty to guard against you connecting to you, us connected to us. And I think this is all about not just their harmonics and spell and thought and all that. I don't think they're that powerful, man. I believe Hawa allowed them to pop off against us, right? So I don't give them um, <laughs> I don't give them no uh, extra credit. You know what I'm saying? It, it's us that takes us down. You know, if you come into a boxing match and you ain't been training, you beat yourself, man. You know, they didn't beat you. You beat yourself. They might feel like they flexing on you now. They might really feel they beat you. <laughs> they might really feel they had to drop. But nah, man. They were allowed to prosper for a time. And I'm just saying, man, that time is over. Because now we see clear. Tarazanta is right over here. I said, now we see clear. Tarazanta is right over here, boss. So imagine your people flourishing in these beautiful lands beyond the poles. Imagine the copper color con, you know, popping off in, in grand, grand con, you know, fashion. You know what I'm saying? 
And we say, who is Presta John? We can't make this up. We didn't know this existed before we searched for Presta John. <laughs> we talking flat drop and ice walls and we've run right into Presta again. We go, we talk Shambhala, Cibola, Kalelus. We run back into Presta again. You start talking indigenous, you know what I'm saying, tribes and, and you know, the evil rule that is already popping off in India Superior and you run right back into Presta John again. You talk Europe and, you know what I'm saying, these, you know, letters from this con of cons that's putting them all in check, letting them know who is the Rex Net Goose. And you keep running back and to Presta John, you talk the Mongol Empire and Genghis Khan and Wong Kong and the Kara Katai and Wong means king and John, or John means, uh, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Wong means king, Khan means priest, Wong Kong. And here we back with Presta John. <laughs> Oh man, so we keep going right back into it. We're talking frequency, you're gonna go right back into it. You're talking David, you know what I'm saying? One shepherd, Managa, you're talking seeking Hawa and David, right back to press the job. Allow Hawa. Can't make this up. What did it say? Races of men, Robert Knox. I mean, he's saying a lot, man. First, he said that you're pretty unique around here. You know, that Columbus and his followers, most of whom were men of great ability, though he alone had genius in that land, these great men found nothing to resemble strictly the countries they had left. No trees, nor shrubs, nor fish, nor fowl. Nothing which lived resembled what they had previously seen. I had better say, nothing was identical with the productions of the old world. So they got over here, boss, and they found nothing over here to resemble what they knew in their world. or barbarian, Morocco, you got snakes in the desert, <laughs> oh yeah, we're talking Morocco, yeah, they, they knew this great sea, they, they knew the Mediterranean, you know, this was their great sea, outside of that, they were trapped, Go get that series called Insular Worlds, Insular Worlds, I-N-S-U-L-A-R, Insular Worlds. We did that, I think, in uh, 2017 or something. But we went all the way in on this is what their perspective of the ocean really was. Outside of this, it's like a mystery, the, the greater ocean, right? Because Atlantis was set up. All these are the mountain peaks of what is under that water. It was not navigable for them. So by the time they come to this new world, terra incognita, Greenland and all that, <laughs> it's mighty green. It's a whole nother world, man. And they found nothing over here to resemble what they knew. But they may have known about the gateways and maybe that's what they were searching for. Whoever set up out of here, man, must got this thought moving island vibe to it, man. <laughs> yeah, man. More worlds beyond the pole. We found nothing to resemble the countries we left. <laughs> nothing over here resembles the countries they had left, man. Not even the trees. Not even the fish. Not even the birds. Nothing was identical with the old world. They found you really in a new world. They're not just calling it a new world. It really is a new world for them. Man was there, no doubt, but he was not identical with any other race. 
these Nagas over here weren't identical with any other race that we found. It's almost like they were separated for a time, preserved for a time. But maybe, you know, without that code, well, we let in the parasite, we let in the invasion, we let in the hijack, and they set it up now for Ham and Kush, right? Now it's Ham and Kush. It's not Calais loose anymore. It's, it's not promised land to you. Not even the Nagas was identical with any other race in your body or your mind, mental qualities or bodily qualities. He differed widely, not just a little Managa. The people, man, was not identical with any other race, mentally or physically. They differed widely from all others. This book is called The Races of Man. And for some reason, the more you go towards the poles, <laughs> at the extremities of this long and singular singularly shaped continent it seems to me that two other races which may have be maybe termed polar or arctic exist to the north we are certain that the so-called eskimo differ essentially from the red indian and in the south is probable so they don't know they're just saying probably the dark colored population the miserable Dark colored people, <laughs> dark colored people, dark colored population, wandering on the outskirts of the land of fire are not red Indians, but a race analogous to the Australian and to the former inhabitants of Van Diemen's land or the devil's island, right? <laughs> Cause they talking dragons polar or arctic races of men dark in color dark in color polar dark in color arctic dark in color you go out here man you run into copper colored nuggets the more polar you get so all these cold war whoa 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 <laughs> Whoa, hey, we just surfing a wave. What's this Cold War really about, man? <laughs> they ain't talking cold like I'm not talking to you cold. They're talking cold, man. They're talking about the Antarctic Treaty. What war? What's going on connected with Antarctica? We already know that Admiral Byrd took 5,000 soldiers and planes and boats to try to invade something in the 1950s, I believe, 60s. So we know that they've literally, you know, Operation High Jump, whatever they're calling it, you know, they were going to war in Antarctica. They're not going to say that here. Maybe they'll just call it a cold war. Let's go. Thus in America, the race is darkened as we approach the poles. <laughs> in America, the race is darkened as we approach the poles. Poles, not just one pole. So what are they going north? They get more swarthy nuggets against science, right? Oh yeah, it's the uh, sun or lack of sun that causes the albino uh, lack of pigmentation. Nah, man. You are what you are no matter where you are. <laughs> I'm just talking Kavera.
But no matter if you're going Caveras, you know, south or north, you know what I'm saying? As you approach the poles, you take your boat, you say, man, forget this spot. I'm going I'm to go this way. <laughs> I'm going to cross all this water, hella water, hella water, right? <laughs> to get out this way. I don't care which way you go, boss. You're going to run into more Nagas, more Nagas, more Nagas, more Nagas, more Prestas. Because the race is darkened as we approach the pole. It's pretty amazing. And this is why you got holy land as you approach the poles. And this is why this is your ancestors that you got to have to factor back into your reality, to your consciousness. You're going to have to remember who is Preston John. Preston John is you. If you don't figure this by now, we are a collective that is holding up this frequency, the function. We've been talking Maroney. <laughs> were we just talking Maroney, man? I know, man. He like drive you tripping. Nah, man. We we're just talking Maroney, right? Book of Mormon. This uh character named Moroni. Last drive, we started talking about the more connection with the more man. This angel Maroney giving Joseph Smith two golden plates. <laughs> they said it was in what, 1820s popping off. He gets resurrected. This Moroni gets resurrected after his death and became an angel who directed Joseph Smith to the location of the buried gold, the golden plates in 1820s. 1820s, while we're at war. <laughs> oh, anti-piracy war is popping. No, no, no major war, boss. Whoa. <laughs> then you're right back in the Sheik Sheikamaga Indian Wars. So, oh, it's still more Indian, more Indian. So we just took off the Indian Wars and call it pirate wars, or is this all the same thing? And during this time. Joseph Smith is popping off. He gets a visit from Maroney. We just talking Tarzanta. <laughs> Moroni. What is Moroni of Phoenix, man? I, I don't know if they'll have anything called Moroni of Phoenix in Google, but, you know, worth a try. So Joseph Hall is who they're crediting with talking about some of this Moroni of Felix or Moroni of Pia. Oh boy. Something tells me we're about to go into another one, y'all. <laughs> we're about to go into another Naga, you know, uh, warp speed <laughs> adventure, man. Something about this Moroni and Phoenix, man. Just talking about American Indians, man. So we didn't get too far from the conversation. Mm. I'm really belly flopping, trying to see what they talking about. Contemporaries did not miss the correspondence 
fatuously dramatized by Riley before his execution between Riley smoking and his pride, his aloofness, whether or not Riley smoked at the execution of his rival Essex. Also, the story sounded so plausible and epitomizing that at his own execution, Riley was forced publicly to deny it. Others quickly adopted the flourish a pipe could bring them. In his mock travelogue, Mundus Alter et Edim, 1605, Joseph Hall discovers Riley and tobacco in Moronia Felix, or in Hall's own gloss, the land of braggarts or of conceited folly. So he's making this whole idiom around this thing. <laughs> he's making this whole story around Moronia. We're just talking Moroni. And how does this, uh, you know, Joseph Hall correlate with this Joseph Smith, who's also popping off with Moroni? You got Joseph Hall popping off with Moroni, Joseph Smith popping off with Moroni, land of braggarts and conceited folly. So these people think they're uppity. Everyone in Moroni of Felix pretends to be noble birth. Uh oh. So we got some nobility popping off around Moronia. Is that what we say? You know what I mean? We got some nobility popping off around here, man. Where the nagas get darker <laughs> as we approach the poles. The race is darkened as we approach the polls. We get some nobility out here. Is that what we're talking about? Huh? And they over there in Terra Fuego. Moronia would be, you know, outside this area. And they talking about nobility, right? You got people dressed up as nobles, you know what I mean? So, yeah. land of fire, terra fuego. Nagas get darker as we approach the poles. Noble birth through their claims, like their sumptuous buildings. They got buildings. <laughs> See, you don't know that they're, you know, just talking about Antarctica, though. You know, we got to put this together. We're talking Tarzan. Are exceedingly flimsy and whatever their external splendor promises on the interior, they are sordid beyond measure. Lacking funds and while their nostrils exhale smoke high in the air, their kitchens have passed completely out of use. <laughs> man, they over here popping off on this Maroni, man. <laughs> you know, I can't tell where this, you know, this joke are coming from with it. But, you know, I'm just looking at Maroni's, man, and seeing them on the maps. The moon just... In Moronia Pia or Moronia Felix, I know not whether nor how long since nor in what cathedral church a fat pre bend fell void. The carcass scarce cold. Many suitors were up in an instant. The first had rich friends, a good purse, and he was resolved to outbid any man before he would lose it. The third was nobly born, and he met, he met to get it by his great parents, patrons, and allies. The force stood up upon his worth. He had newly found out strange mysteries in chemistry. What, man? We just talking about Moroni. Moroni Pia, man. This is crazy talk. 
right? You got Pia Moroni, and that seems to connect with this gateway that goes right through, right? So if you really want to get out of there, you got to go right through Moroni. <laughs> and what does that Moroni have to do with this Moroni in the Book of Mormon, the prophet? This Captain Moroni. Captain Moroni, an important F5 military commander who lived during the first century BC. That's interesting. Just like Sylvanus Bravo. Yeah, we're finding some contemporaneousness going on, man. We just we just asking who or who is pressed to China. We're seeing these characters, you know, overlapping now, man. We overlap in the Book of Mormon with Antarctica. I don't know if every, I don't know if anyone's ever uh, compared the Book of Mormon with Antarctica before, <laughs> but we surfing away for real. We talking Shambhala. We talking a pure land, Cibola, pure land. If Shambhala is a pure land and Cibola is Kalelus or Promised Land, then the pure land is the Promised Land, or this mythical place, these mysteries they talk about. Hold up, man. We're talking Bravo. First century, right? In 775 AD, Nehemiah Theodori reconquered the American Empire of Kalelus. Kalelus was ruled by Sylvanus Totexas, Solomon the Builder, the hereditary ruler of this former Hebrew Romani colony. Kalelus was founded in the first century BC. Captain Moroni, an important military commander of these Nephi, lived during the first century BC. Can't make this stuff up. The artist's expression of Moroni is not the actual depiction of Moroni. That's just their expression of what they want him to be. They want him to look like. We're talking Nagas in the first century. He is mentioned first mentioned in the book of Alma as the chief captain over the Nephites, man. We're talking Prestors, right? In the first century. Kaledus was founded in the first century. I told you, man, this Mormon flow is about to overlap with this Kaledus flow. And just hold on to your boo bomb. Kalelus was founded in the first century BC by the Babylonian Exilarch, which means these are the Hebrew Israelite cons during Babylonian captivity, such as David Sauslin and them. It was founded in the first century BC by the Exilarch known as Sylvanus Ogon. So, so Sylvanus to Texas gets his title from Sylvanus Ogon, who gets his title from another Sylvanus, right? So they say Silvo connects with the silver mines, the silver mines, but it also connects with this Salom or Salam or Shalom. Salomon, Exilarch, Nasi. Amara, ruler of Sumer. How you connect this with Sumeri? A great Hebrew, Remani ruler. Remani means pomegranate. Pomegranate is the pomegranata, pomegranaga. That proves you're in the promised land with the pomegranate. And now we're back to talking Joshua again. Quetzalcoatl again, Rainbow Dragon again, Israel, 
because we're still talking Quetzalcoatl. His priest is Israel the seventh because they went to the Sylvanus Toltec lands. Israel the third went around 1000 AD. But in the first century BC, according to Daniel Lowe and the Forbidden Histories, excuse me, Forbidden, yeah, Forbidden Histories of America, first century BC, it's being set up by Sylvanus Bravo. And we correlated the Bravo possibly with another David flow, because David, you know, after him comes this Solomon, you know what I mean? Solomon the Builder, although he didn't, Bravo is also technically under the title of Sylvanus or Solomon as well. But he's popping off first, right in the first century BC. He's the founder. Kalelus was ruled by Sylvanus to Texas, Solomon the Builder, the hereditary ruler of this Hebrew kingdom, okay? Kalelus was founded in the first century BC by Sylvanus Ogam or Sylvanus Bravo. That's how they're getting the barber title in Barbaria. I'm talking barber, which means I'm talking swan, swan knights, ships of Solomon, swan boats. In America, Managi, in the 700s. Another 700 years before Columbus in there, man. But in the first century, Kalelus is founded by Sylvanus, Ogam, or Rabo. How does it correlate with Moroni? Captain Moroni. He is living during the first century BC. Same area, because this is America. We're talking Mormons. We're talking America. We're talking Moroni. Captain Moroni is presented as a righteous and skilled military commander. Among his accomplishments were his extensive preparations for battle and his fierce defense of the right of the Nephites to govern themselves and worship as they saw fit. Captain Moroni shares his name with the prophet Moroni. The former is indexed in the LDS edition of the Book of Mormon. So they act like they're two separate people because they're dealing with two separate places in the timelines and they can't tell you that one is happening really, you know, at another time, right? So by the time you get to their, you know, their angel Moroni, he's leading Joseph Smith <laughs> in the 1800s. This ain't no BC talk. What did we just witness, Monaga? And Monaga in the back of the class, what did you just see in real time? You saw an 1,800-year time shift, didn't you? You saw an 1,800-year time shift. And for Manco, gave us three time shifts. 333 years. 1,053 years. 1,778 years. Yeah. Arguing for shortened chronology, they argue that an intentional falsification of his, of his story took place in the 1600s and 1800s. This is during the Shikamaka War, right? <laughs> so while they are exterminating us, they are resetting everything. Ice Age is popping off, chronology is being changed, history, his story is being changed. The popular notion is that human civilization dawned maybe six to 10,000 years ago. Formanko's new chronology condenses this time to 1,200 years ago. 
by arguing the events of civilization were artificially placed further back in time by shifts of roughly 333 years, 1,053 years, and 1,778 years, my nine. The three shifts have also been listed by Fermenko as roughly 330, 1050, and 1800 years, my nine. So they can go from talking about first century Kalelus, first century BC, Sylvanus Ogon, to Captain Maroney, first century BC. Then they can skip how many years? 1800 years. And they can skip from Captain Maroney to uh, remember Captain Maroney shares a name with the prophet Maroney, right? <laughs> right. Maroney is popping off with Joseph Smith, leading him to the gold in 1820, 1800 years later. But they had to make him some resurrected situation. Da, 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 da. They had to change the story because they couldn't say that. All this is happening in the 1800s, right? Because it's all happening. And now they, you know, stretch beyond the barrier on a noggin in the 50s, in the Cold War. <laughs> and now in the Cold War, we're talking Tarzan to Holy Land, and we're talking Moronia, man. Moronia, man. My noggin, we're talking Moroni, man. All right. Is it play play? And to get through the gateway, you got to pass Moroni. I can't make this stuff up. We're comparing, we're drawing a comparison between the Book of Mormon, <laughs> Kalelu, Sylvanus, Bravo, Ogon, first century Kalelus, with Captain Moroni, with the land of Moroni. In Antarctica, Managa. Let's talk necromancy. Because, you know, when you're talking worlds beyond the poles, you're, you're always talking necromancy. Remember that poem in the beginning of Worlds Beyond the Poles? Necronomicon, right? Necromancy. And just right quick, you know, just something I belly flopped in. <laughs> On the website, man, shout out Dragon Child. The Nagaville flag is popping off. Yo, all right. So Antarctica is also connected with this German map of the cave world, right? It's supposed to be some cave world route to Shambhala. This link probably don't even exist on the internet no more, man. We, we PDF to put it on the website years ago. Seven countries, right? Cibola, seven cities of gold. Shambhala, same thing. Going quickly, Antarctica, all right, this is a map of their cave world, according to the Germans, and I'm going to leave the link for you so you can dig on it, but they were connecting with Asgard through Antarctica, and now you see this whole flow, you know, and apparently, you know, some even, you know, literally took this route and never came back, you know, but wrote back and said, hey, it's, it's paradise over here, it's all happening, you know what I mean, and you know, however they did it, man. But, you know, they this map shows us the main continent of this hemisphere called Liberia. The main poem is also called Valkyrie Ocean. In the center on the far left, we can see the connection to other hemispheres, man. There the Asgard is represented. No one or one can cross over to the other continent, namely the continent Asgard. Just to the right of the Asgard Sea are the Gaul Islands. Man. So here it says the Tibetan monks. Or, uh, below is the city of Shambhala. All right. They call it the city of the gods. 
The Tibetan monks may or still say that the city of Shambhala really exists, but not on the surface of our planet, but inside. So here is confirmed by the map that Shambhala is a real city in the earth on the inside of the crust. So here what they got Liberia, which would be what one of the Asias, you know what I mean, Africa or Asias or one of, you know, <laughs> it's not Libya, it's Liberia. And then they set up this new spot over there called Liberia about African Americans leaving America, you know, all this stuff. So this is a big continent called Liberia. Okay, so they got the ocean. And then here's this Shambhala situation. And they say it's within the earth. Shambhala. It's all got to do with Antarctica, my naga. This is why they're making treaties, son. <laughs> this is why they mad, son. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, I'm going to leave this for you. But they, they even show how to get there. This ain't no play play. They're, they're, this, these are documents, man. <laughs> Descend from the point of descent with half right a starboard slope of 10 degrees with a bow load angle of inclination 5 degrees distance 188 nautical miles present depth 500 meters due to the corridor running pressure of the ship's body is less important during maneuver. This is not play play. This is how they got there. Drive to a guard the full speed look straight ahead until the new light is settled. What new light? Another another sun? Like what? Change of magnetic poles, the movement of the compass, needles, and measurement instruments are negligible. And yeah, we about to be right back on this flat drop. This is supposed to be a letter that they got back from Nagas that got across. You know what I'm saying? It's Charles Unger. He says on trip. <laughs> The submarine 2009 or 209 has done. The earth is hollow. Dr. Hallshafer and Hess were right. The whole team is doing well. But we can't return. But we're not prisoners. <laughs> I'm sure this message will reach you. It's the last link with the U-209. This was their last message. We'll meet again, comrade. I'm anxious for those who have spent their lives on the surface of the earth since the Fuhrer has gone. God bless Germany, man. All right, man. So, yeah. These Cold Wars have a lot more to do with Terra Sancta or Shambhala than you think, man. You know, it's all necromancy. You know, world's beyond the poles, been dropping that drop, man. You know, F I'm a D O G and Nini. You you've been up in the drive library, man. You've been surfing the wave. A hop to you. Hundred proofs, Earth not a globe. We're gonna be right back in the flat drive, man. You know, we just uh enjoying the flow. There we go, there we go. I'm just <laughs> and these are all just amazing books that are up there for you. Hundreds of books up there for you, my naga, and we got hundreds more to go. This is that thousand dollar book that we getting all this press to drop out of and Mongo drops. They got the Fermenko chronology drop in there as well. Just letting you know this ain't no play play. What we coming out of or coming with has already been here for you. We don't take no hundred percent from no book. You know, we just are surfing the way, you know, putting our story together, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> And um, you know, I'm proud of our team here at 432 Drop Nation, man. Aqua Tai, our record keeper, making sure we got that for the mango chronologies. We got all these chronologies dealing with for mango. So uh, the cold brand, I mean, you know, you can get into all types of journeys, man. Just stay foundational. That's why the cold got to be in you. Forbidden histories of America, lost tribes and promised lands, the Ospi, Managa, all the drive. Man, we're gonna get right back into the book of Kalam Balam, man. And 
This is all the indigenous flow, man. Secret destiny of America, Manly Hall. Oh, man, you know we popping off. Right now, I'm just talking world beyond a pole. You know, I'm just talking necromancy right there for you. It's a great poem that F. Amadeo opens up with that I think is worth sharing as we get into this necromancy drop. Talk a little about the mad era, man, and keep the water flowing and press the John 95 because they're finding more land, right? The following pages contain the first and only description, only description of the realistic universe of land, water, and ocean, and vegetation where human and other forms of animal life abound. This is not fiction, not a work of fiction, nor is it a technical analysis of anything. It is simply a recital of fact which transcends the most elaborate fiction ever conceived. It is diametrically opposed to the assumptions of the mathematical conclusions of theorists and technicians throughout the ages. It is truth, my love. These pages describe the physical land routes from the earth to every land area of the universe about us, which is all land, not outer space, more land. Such routes extend from beyond the North Pole and South Pole, so-called ends of the Earth as decreed by the theory, because Nagas get more swarthy as you approach the pole. It will be here, here be adequately shown that there are no, no limits to the Earth, no northern limits, no southern limits. It will thereby be shown where movement straight, not up, but straight ahead from the pole points and on the same level as the earth permits of movement into celestial land areas, the heavens, you just got to go straight ahead. Permits of movement into celestial land, appearing up or out of the earth, more land, my naga. An original treatise basic to this book was written and has been expounded at American universities, 1927 and 1930. We're talking about the 20s and 30s, huh? Since then, the U.S. Naval Research Bureau and U.S. Navy's exploratory invading forces have conclusively confirmed the work's principal features since December 12, 1928, U.S. Navy polar expeditions invasions have determined the existence of indeterminable land extent beyond the pole points out of bounds of the assumed isolated globe Only dreams are true. The tangible and real, the tangible and real on which our lives are based was yesterday's ideal, a rosy picture traced by some quaint visionary, impractical, half-cracked, painting his fancies, his maps, man, right? Painting his fancies, airy. Let's back it up. Only dreams are true. The tangible and real on which our lives are based was yesterday's idea, a rosy picture traced by some quaint visionary, impractical, half-cracked, painting his fancies airy, and now it's a solid fact? Whatever we hold stable, dependable, and sane was once a hopeful fable of castles building Spain. More on more war. They're telling us in our face, Paul. Where's the fable coming from that we hold stable, Managa? Before the fact, the fancy, before the deed, the dream that builds by necromancy. The hard material scheme, the matrix is built off the necromancy, the spells, and we're going to get into the Moorish science spells, right? And not all of them subscribe to 
this Necrona, Necromicon, you know, this Simon Necromicon, Matt Arab flow, some just practice different, you know, principles of this and that. So we're not bashing nobody, but clearly it's a more and more war. And clearly it's a frequency war. And clearly we got spells and like the quantum physics flow and the double slit experiment in order, you know, to change the behavior of a particle, you must observe it. So once you start observing the spell or observing the fact that you've been put to sleep, observing the fact that you're dreaming, then maybe you can get out of the hard material skin. Your spinning ball earth, your money, <laughs> your, your currency. Because before the fact, it was a fancy. Before the deed, it was just a dream that builds by necromancy, the hard material scheme. So all your towers that shimmer, your lamps that light the sky were once a tiny glimmer within some seer's eye, man. Who's the seer? Who's the magi? Who's doing the magic? Time makes our empires scatter. But we shall build anew, for only visions matter, and only dreams are true. What is Burton Braley dropping all, man? <laughs> and what is this necromancy truly, truly all about? Surfing the wave. Necronomicon. So this is the complete necromancy book, part one. <laughs> and I'm gonna go back, but I'm just picking it up, just belly flopping in the banishings, right? So we're gonna talk about this, but I'm just jumping in this, man. We're gonna belly flop. I'm not reading no spells to y'all, so don't even ask for that. And I'm gonna try to skip over all of their deity names because I don't even want to conjure none. You know, I don't want to, you know what I mean? I don't even want to speak their frequency. <laughs> <laughs> we popping up. So in the interim period between the translation and the pub publication of this work, the editor, along with the circle of initiates and other disciplines, undertook to experiment with the rituals and forces outlined in the Necronomicon in using the material alone or within the Western ceremonial structures, such as the Golden Dawn system. We can, upon startling discoveries in both cases, we came upon startling discoveries. In both cases, there are no effective banishings for the forces invoked in the Necronomicon itself. Whoa. So if you invoke something, they don't know how to undo that. So be careful what you're doing and don't just be popping off. You know, nah, this ain't for that. You got to be responsible. That's why we're talking about it in Preston 95. You've had 94 other parts <laughs> to get your mind right, man. So don't go tripping. I'm just showing you that this is a source, not even the source, but a source of their power, of their spell. And this itself is not an original work. There's, you know, it, this is real life Harry Potter stuff, right? Last time we talked about the Slytherin, Harry Potter Slytherin school. Uh, school, you know, and how the Slytherin is connected with the Moor. <laughs> Can't make this stuff up. Harry Potter books, man. Salazar Slytherin is a whole house on Salazar. When you talk Castilia, Castilia, Spain, castles built in Spain, right? Castles built in Spain. Salazar, we're talking more and more. We're talking Harry Potter. Whatever we hold stable, dependable, and sane was once a hopeful, hopeful fable of castles built in Spain. Come. Okay. Harry Potter stuff, man. This is Harry Potter stuff, man. All right. I know. I know. It's crazy. It's crazy talk, right? Nah, man. This is what's happening. <laughs> The rituals, incantations, and formula of this book are of ancient 
origin compromising comprising some of the oldest written magical workings in the western occult history the deities and demons identified within have probably not been effectively summoned in nearly six thousand years so don't go play <laughs> these are ancient sumerian deities they have to summon against us just like they were trying to get balaam to curse us their king balak was trying to curse us through their prophet balaam and he ended up giving us baruch because the creator you know tuned up his frequency just like cyrus nebuchadnezzar you know what i'm saying all their pharaohs ended up raising us up because hawa gives us favor hawa gives us favor Yeah. They come across some startling stuff, they say, right? Startling stuff. They realize that when you evoke something out of here, how they say it. Startling discovery in both cases, there are no effective banishings for the forces invoked in this spell book. They, they don't know how to banish whatever forces. And sometimes these forces are just way too strong and they end up, you know, devouring the practitioner. You know, we're just skimming through this. You know, we just want to show you that this is what their power, their, 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 Sumerian Babylonian energy is coming, is connecting with. Some of these have not been effectively summoned for nearly 6,000 years. Ordinary exorcisms and banishing formula have thus far proved extremely inadequate. <laughs> they, can't, they can't get these forces off them once they invoke them. This by experience, magicians can't even do it. Hence the following recommendations. <laughs> the religion of the ancient Sumerian people seemed to have been lunar oriented, a religion or religion magical structure of the night of darkness in a sense. Whoa, we're getting deeper. So they got a lot of lunar magic, right? A lot of lunar oriented magic. I mean, you know, they 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 popping off with the moon. <laughs> Ty Battle, like, see, I told you. <laughs> All right, nah, but uh, so that's their magical structure of the night of darkness in a sense. Invocations using solar formula have proved thus far effective in successfully banishing Necronomicon demons and intelligences. So saying you can't try to banish him with no lunar formula you got to use a solar formula now you can bring in the the sun god right now you can bring in uh jc right uh the son of god right they they need zeus for this <laughs> right so they need apollo for this right so what do they do for instance is the kaddish kaddish prayer of the jewish faith contains some solar elements that have proved resilient to inimical gentile and the vibration of the lord's prayer for christians is also a workable method so first they went to the hebrew faith all right now obviously you know they got their sun god flow you know samaria is straight up you know yada yada but notice that, you know, they first say, hey, you know, <laughs> to effectively banish, effective banishing for this lunar flow, you might need to get, you know, into the Hebrew flow now. They got their Judaism, and of course they got their Christianity, and of course they got their sun, sun entities, you know, and all this stuff, but it seems to me, if I'm looking at a cold word, that they kind of have to go to Hawaii. <laughs> they kind of got to go to the creator you know, and get back at these elements to prove any resilience against these frequencies. They also go to the Lord's Prayer for Christians. It's also a workable method. 
is workable because, you know, they're probably not saying it in English. <laughs> and, you know, uh, they have to tweak whatever in order to, you know, get it, get the job done. Because at the end of the day, they're trying to exercise the demons, the demons that they're calling on. Their demons and intelligences. Now, this Lord's Prayer, right? <laughs> Our Father, which are in heaven, hallowed be thy name, right? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forget our debts. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. If you forgive men that trespasses, your heavenly father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men that trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. So that's a workable method. But they typically had to go to the Tanakh, you know. Uh, something like this might work even better. <laughs> a Psalm of David, you know. The Hawa is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul, Hawa. He guides me in straight paths for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, get back, get back, back, High Jack. I will fear no evil. This sounds like it got way more frequency than their Lord's prayer in the face of darkness. <laughs> I will fear no evil, for Hawa is with me. Thy rod and your staff, they comfort me. They prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. That's what you tell him, High Jacks. You have anointed my head with oil, Hawa. My cup runs over, Hawa. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me, Hawa, all the days of my life, Hawa. And I shall dwell in the house of Hawa forever that got way more frequency than the jc joint but it is a workable method we suggest the individual operators utilize an equivalent solar i.e positive light so when they're talking solar they're also talking positivity not darkness kind of sound like star wars right <laughs> all right invocation from their own religion or the religion of their aunt. whoa whoa so you got to go to the code of your ancestors that's the suggestion if you want to back back these demons of the night right that is being invoked and if this works for something you accidentally invoke or whatever you invoke will it work you know what I'm saying? For that, which they have it already put on us. You know what I'm saying? Saying these type of high vibration psalms every day and stuff like that to back back these energies because it is a frequency war. So we're getting the babies out the bathwater. We know it's a magical world out here, so we can't run from magic. We got our own energy frequency and vibration, but we have to be in cold. We can't misuse it. We can't use it on each other. We got to be with one consent. We got to be tribed up with Hawa. We suggest that the individual operators, the Magi, use an equivalent positive invocation from their own religion or the religion of their ancestors should the no longer have a religion or should they have change it in their lifetime so a lot of practitioners or even when you when they talk about the uh simon necromicon they say hey well make sure you have a religion you know make sure you have you know something because we you're going to need that to banish you know what i'm saying you're going to need that christianity you're going to need that islam to do the right magic or counter magic because all this is magic on the surface, you got the Bible and Christians going to church. Behind that, you have the grimoire, my naga. You got the charms. You got the vibration and the spells and the frequency war. For best practical purposes in the beginning, 
for those intent on actually using the rituals contained herein, it is advisable to take a special care in the construction of the magical circle and of all magical defenses, a preliminary period of purification is well in order before attempting anything in this grimoire. Now they got grammar, <laughs> grammar school. Grimoire is magic. Grammar is magic. Charm school, grammar school, they get our children in, in grammar school, A-E-I-O-U. Persons of unstable mental condition. Uh-oh, listen up. Unstable mental conditions or unstable emotional conditions should not be allowed under any circumstance to observe one of these rituals in progress. <laughs> Don't come here with all your emotions. <laughs> that would be criminal and perhaps suicidal. One of our colleagues was fairly attacked by his dog directly following a fairly simple and uncomplicated formula from this book. This is definitely not a Gilbert chemistry set. This ain't no play play. No play play. This ain't no chemistry set. <laughs> the method of the Necromicon concerns deep primeval forces that seem to pre-exist seems to pre-exist the normal archetypal images of the terror trumps and the golden dawn telismatic figures these are forces that developed outside the judo judeo christian mainstream mm. and were worshipped and summoned long before the creation of the kabbalah whoa as we know it today hence the ineffectiveness of the golden dawn banishing procedures against them they are not necessarily demonic or cliffotic Q-L-I-P-H-O-T-I-C in the sense that these terms are commonly understood in the West. They just simply represent power sources largely untapped and thus far ignored by 20th century mainstream consciousness. Whoa. So these motherfuckers, these motherfuckers, <laughs> these Ishmaelites were setting up shop with their mountain of harmonics are summoning the oldest primeval forces, Managa, against you. This Ice Age wasn't for no reason, man. We know we got put to sleep in a Ruach Tardy mob, but this technology probably existed in Atlantis too. If they're using old Atlantean magic, they're using old Atlantean Harmonics and what does this got to do with the Moorish Science Temple? Let's talk about it. Oh, they're not necessarily demons. They just represent power sources untapped. Well, did Hawaii tell you to go after these untapped power sources, man? Or is that a nice way to say, hey, man, I want to call on another power? You breaking the code from jump, but you think these old untapped sources going to save you from the creator? From our source? From the source? It might predate the creation of the Kambala as you know it, but not as it truly exists. They build by necromancy. They build by necromancy. That builds by necromancy the hard material scheme. We're just talking necromicon. I mean, you know, the question is, what has this got to do with their sciences? Over the past years, some members of the Moorish American community <laughs> have taken a vested interest in the workings of the Necromicron. 
a grimmere book, right? A spell book, right? You know, this Lovecraft TV series and all that. Alistair Crowley spells. And it's woven together with a story about a man known as the Mad Arab, man. And we say, who's this Mad Arab, man? And why are you so mad? So this same Moabite prophet who's gathering their tribes at the same time as the Kumse is gathering our tribes is calling and invoking on the oldest. I mean, <laughs> ancient, some of the ancient power sources, right? And these ancient power sources is what they're using to freeze us out, is what they're using to, you know, make sure we sleep. A walk could say we, we sleep, but they have to make sure we sleep. And why they call him the Mad Arab, man? That's, that's interesting, right? But the Moors have taken an interest in the, necro, the necromicon, in the necromancy. Why? What has the Moors got to do with necromancy? What has it got to do with the Baphomet or the Mahomet? What does Gabriel have to do with Thoth? And what has all this got to do with Moroni? <laughs> <laughs> more and more war, man. This may be the case, particularly because Simon Necromicon is a grimoire spell of ancient Mesopotamian magic. What does the more got to do with ancient magic? And the Moorish American legacy finds its origin in such traditions, according to the Holy Quran and the Moorish Science Temple of America or Pembroke, you know. And Pembroke probably connects to one of these, you know, Pemberton towns, you know, just like uh, Harry Potter, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, all these represent some Harry Potter type school, you know, whether you're talking the House of Slytherin, you know, all that is about the more and more war, man. And they were, you know, fighting against each other with magic, right? The Chromicon magic, right? So the Moorish American community has a vested interest in these spells and these charms of Mesopotamian ancient magic. The Moorish American legacy finds its origin in these traditions. The Moabite finds its origin in the traditions of necromancy. throwing stones at Mercurius, right? According to their books of the Moore Science Temple of America, we read the key of civilization was and is in the hands of Asiatic nations. The Moors who were ancient Moabites and founders of the holy city of Mecca. Yeah, the Thorndike Bernhard Dictionary makes a direct connection between Moor and Moab. So this is why we bring in Joshua, and this is why we tell him why they mad. When we talk a lot, we can see the Sodom and Amora flow in that now. Connect that. What's happening right here, right? Yep. Right here in America, because this is America, and they got all their elder gods, and they got ancient gods, and all this elder business, ancient business connects to the same Samaria flow. For them, it's all in the flow. Elder gods, ancient ones. What does this really mean, man? We, we hear it all the time. So these were sorcerer's handbooks and generally not meant as textbooks or encyclopedias. Ceremonial magic, in other words, the sorcerer or magician is supposed to be in possession of the requisite knowledge and training with which to carry out a complex magical ritual. We know when you talk Presto, you're talking magic, you're talking fountains of you, magical rings that make you go invisible. They could walk on water with magical cloaks 
So you're talking the land of magic. So it's not like, oh, magic, bad, sorcery, yada, yada. It's like, nah, what magic are you using? What power are you invoking on us, on your own brothers to conquer this land, to put us into deeper sleep, to extend our sleep, to extend the code, the cold war, to keep our conscience frozen. Something about the waking up of a Naga correlates to the waking up of an Antarctica and these other lands, the Nagas across the plain. We're all connected. What's this requisite knowledge, man? Huh? The requisite knowledge that they just spoke of, the sorcerer or magician must be in possession of this requisite knowledge and training in order to carry out these complex rituals, right? This requisite knowledge is more science, man. Come on, man. More science temple here, Mecca, Mohammed. X marks the spot crossing out the Kumsay, crossing out Tippecanoe at the Battle of Tippecanoe. Damming up the Wabash River. Millions of acres in the treaties given away to the hijack so they can migrate. <laughs> Just migrate on over, right? During our wars, you want to migrate. During our war, you want to migrate. Okay. I mean, my naga, it's time to see clearly. You want to migrate during our destruction. You want to migrate during the Shikamago War. You want to migrate. Okay. So, this migration is leading to these harmonics. We're linking these harmonics, this more science uh, migration, you know what I'm saying, to this mad Arab. <laughs> to their necromancy, right? Their elder gods, their ancient ones. This is how they rock, right? So how could it otherwise, how could it be otherwise when the text is narrated by the mad Arab? Before we go further, I must say, for those not educated in the modern mechanics of Moorish science, the movement is divided into two sections. Okay, listen up. This is good. As we begin to make a dismal, you know, we've covered a few things and we get deeper and deeper every time. So the movement is divided into two sections of which Simon Necromicon may be the bridge. First, we have those that follow the admonition of Noble Drew Ali and are registered members of the Moorish Science Temple of America, the Elder Gods. So they're rocking directly with Noble, you know what I mean? And with the Moorish Science Temple of America, they're considered connected to these Elder Gods. Keep that in mind. They are law-abiding citizens because they're part of the treaties of the United States, got it, only seeking to expand on their knowledge and self of self and advance their community, their community, not Israel, right? <laughs> not the tribes of Israel, Moab, right? Uh, the Confederacy, Canaanites, you know, all that. So they're only seeking to expand their knowledge and advance their community. They're not seeking to advance us as a people. <laughs> They're just seeking to advance their community of Moab and them. Psalms 83, expanding their knowledge of what? Uh, more worlds beyond a pole. <laughs> Secondly, we have Moors. So you have those in a Moorish science temple, and then you got Moors, got it, who are inspired by the works of Charles Mosley Bay, as he's popularly known, uh, developed a Masonic lineage so they're more into the mason flow uh that such organizations like clock of dynasty and the great seal of the national moorish affairs and they're called the ancient ones so the more masonic flow 
Masonic lineage. Uh, you know, they would just call themselves Moors. Anybody else might be Moorish, you know, or part of the science temple. And that's how you distinguish between the elder gods, my naga, and the ancient ones. Ka. Ka. Because we, we, we got to distinguish between the elder gods and the ancient ones. Back to Necromicon. We're going back and forth. Basically, there are two sets of gods in the mythos. Okay, now we got deeper. The elder gods, all right, uh, more science temple following Nova Juali, right? The elder gods about whom not much is revealed, save that they are a stellar race that occasionally comes to the rescue of man, of which corresponds to the Christian light <laughs> and the ancient ones. All right, so the ancient ones are the Moors that are, you know, rocking more with the Masonic flow about which much is told sometimes in great detail. Uh, con, con. So this gives us a, a different viewpoint as they're giving us here with this Necromicon connection with the Moorish Masonic text, the Masonic flow. Here, the Masonic lineage is the ancient ones. And the ones that are, you know, more following the admonitions of Noble Drew Ali, you know, more science temple, they are the elder gods. Okay. The ancient ones, which much is told, sometimes in great detail. And what, co what, what corresponding with Christian light are they talking about? Connecting with these elder gods. All right, these elder gods again. <laughs> Yeah, they're the more science temple, okay? All right. Okay, and they have this stellar rays corresponding with the Christian light. <laughs> All right. About which much is told. We're talking the ancient ones now. Sometimes a great detail will correspond to darkness. These latter are the evil gods whom wish nothing but ill for the race of man. Oh, man. Getting deep. Turn my vibrations up, man. These later are the evil gods who wish nothing but ill for the race of man and who constantly strive to break into our world through a gate or door that leads from the out, <laughs> from the outside, right? Moroni and them, Moroni and them, they, they trying to break through the gateway <laughs> from the outside. My naga, come on, man. Come on, man. That lead through the gateways, right? Constantly, these ancient ones, quote unquote, are trying to get through the gateways, right? Seems to be some guardians on these gateways or something, man. But this is what their treaty is about. Hey, look, we gotta we gotta help each other with these gateways, man. We gotta help each other with these gateways. Let's make a treaty. That's never going to be broke. Darkness, like Game of Thrones, the whites, W-I-G-H-T, demons, are trying to get through the wall to break into our world through a gate or door from the outside. From the outside in. There are certain people among us who are devotees of the ancient ones and who tried to open the gate just like CERN portals so that this evidently repulsive organization may once again rule the earth. That's that custodian flow that we was getting with the flat drop. They said 178 worlds out, outside of our world, all land. Chief among these is, all right, like I said, I'm not saying these names, so I'm just going to highlight them. Typify as a sea monster, kind of like a Leviathan flow, dwelling in the great deep, a sort of primeval ocean. And if this sea monster is an ancient one, then these are the type of dragons, not demons, but 
dragons that they're calling on from these are primordial dragons that they're trying to use against us. <laughs> That's pretty much what's happening. Their magic is calling on these sea monsters, man, <laughs> and whatever other dragons, you know what I mean? These elemental dragons to get these elemental powers to do stuff like, I don't know, uh, create some type of ice age, create some type of uh, glaciation in America, glaciers in America. Uh oh, I think we see it clearly, boss. Let's get a little more. There is also bang, all right. <laughs> The blind idiot god of chaos, y'all. Yeah, oh, I almost said it. <laughs> all right, they got partners, they're partners in chaos, and this other cat, the goat with a thousand young. Yeah. Uh oh, here comes they buy for me. They appear at various times throughout the stories of bang, <laughs> all right, mythos and frightening forms which test the strength and resourcefulness of the protagonist and their attempts to put the hellish things back to whence they came. There is an overriding sense of pride or primitive deer and cosmic terror in those pages as though man is dealing with something that threatens other than the physical, his physical safety, his very spiritual nature. So there's an overriding sense of cosmic terror as though man is dealing with something that's threatening, not just physically, but spiritually. The horror cosmology is extended by the frequent appearance of the book Necromicon. According to Lovecraft's tales, a volume written in Damascus in the eighth century AD by a person called Mad Arab or Abdul al Hazred. al -Hazred. Now they're calling Noble Drew Ali the Mad Arab over there. So what's this got to do with this eighth century flow? Huh? Who's the Mad Arab? Is it all? Is Noble Drew, you know, some incarnation of this? Abdul, you know what I mean? <laughs> it must run roughly 800 pages in length as there is a reference in one of the stories concerning some lacune on the page in the 700s. It may have been copied or it had been copied and reprinted in various languages. The story goes among them Latin, Greek, and English. Such books have existed, in fact, and do exist. Idris Shah, Idris like the Idris, like Thoth in there, tells us of a search he conducted for a copy of the Book of Power. What do they learn in the Book of Power, my naga? What do they learn in the Book of Power, my naga? By the Arab magician Abdul Qadar. See the secret lore of magic by, by Shaw. Shaw means chief or priest in their language, of which only one copy was ever found. The Keys of Solomon had a similar reputation, as did the Magus by Barrett, until all of these works were eventually reprinted. In the last 15 years or so, the Golden Dawn, a famous British and American occult lodge of Hushaga Masonic, right? Of the turn of the century, was said to have possessed a manuscript called The Veils of Negative Existence by another Arab. We ain't talking Arab proper no more. These were the sorcerer's handbooks and generally not meant as textbooks or encyclopedias of ceremonial magic. In other words, the sorcerer or magician is supposed to be in possession of the requisite knowledge here we go again <laughs> and training with which to carry out complex magical rituals just as a cook is expected to be able to master the scrambling of eggs before he conjures an egg benedict the grimoires or black books were simply variations on a theme like cookbooks different records of what previously previous magicians had done the spirits they had contacted and the successes they had, the magicians who now read these works are expected to be able to select the wheat from the chef in much of the same fashion as an alchemist discerning the deliberate errors in a treatise on his subject. 
Wow. So therefore, it was and is insanity for the Tyro, T-Y-R-O, to pick up a work on ceremonial magic like the Lesser Kid Solomon to practice conjurations. It would also be folly to pick up Crowley's magic and theory and practice with the same intention. Both books are definitely not for beginners, a point which cannot be made too often. Unfortunately, perhaps the dread Necromicon falls into this category. And it goes into Crowley's magic, man. And, you know, recon Alexander Crowley and see what he do. Oh, man, it's almost flapjack time. And my, my droplets are popping off. I'm trying to get a little more for y'all, man. Um, <laughs> Samaria, right? So next time we'll pick this up, go right into the Samaria flow. They got uh, the worship of the ancient ones in history, right? These are the ones beyond the wall. Let them curse in that day. And that curse the day who are skillful to rouse Leviathan. So they trying to rouse Leviathan. But one of these spells, they were just calling him Kerr. S.H. Hook in his excellent Middle Eastern mythology tells us that the Leviathan mentioned in Job and elsewhere in the Old Testament is the Hebrew name given to the serpent TMI. We recon a little on that TMI. That's mama. That's big mama dragon, right? The big mama, they call her the devil now. They call her Viathan the serpent devil. Everyone's a twisted devil to them. But this is who they're conjuring sea monsters like Leviathan or Tiamat, the chaos dragon. <laughs> All right, and this is who's closely identified with this name that they're conjuring up here or this absolute here, this twisting dracon that's be popping off. Now we're talking dragons. <laughs> uh, it's all about the dragons, man. This is what we're seeing. They've been eating our dragons, hijacking our dragons in every way, and they even hijacking them, hijacking the magic and using it against us, man. This monster is well known to cult worship all over the world in China. However, there is an interesting twist. Far from being considered a completely hostile creature dedicated to the erasure of mankind from the page of existence, the dragon, who? The dragon, to see clearly, etymology, the dragon, you see clearly, the dragon is given a place of preeminence and does not hear of a Chinese angel or saint striving to slay the dragon, but rather to cultivate it. The Chinese system of geomancy, feng shui, pronounced feng shui is the science of understanding the dragon currents. You ever heard of feng shui, trying to get the flow, the flow of energy, the dragon lines, the ley lines, the dragon currents, currency, the only currency that truly exists, which exists beneath the earth, ley lines, dragon lines, vortexes, Taurus Santa. These are telluric energies that are distilled in such places as Charles or C H R T R E S Cathedral in France, Glastonbury, Tor in England, and the Zagorats of Mesopotamia. In both European and Chinese cultures, the dragon or serpent is said to reside somewhere below the earth. The devil, right? It is a powerful force, a magical force, which is identified with mastery over the created world. It is also a power that can be summoned by the few and not the many. However, in China, there did not seem to be a backlash of fear or resentment against this force. It was known in Europe and Palestine and the symbol of, of might and kingship in China is still the dragon. And we say free Phineas, because that was also the symbol, the sign of the Amaru Khan for freedom. But we lost our way. We put that sign before Hawa. Imagine this dragon power. You think you're so powerful. Hawa put you to sleep. You don't even know who you are. He says, by the time you wake up and realize how powerful you are, you're going to say, yeah, you are Hawa. You do exist. You got the power to put us to sleep. You are all powerful. Free Phoenix, man. Free the Naga. Free the dragon.
free the flow, free flow. In the West, the conjuration, cultivation, or worship of this power was strenuously opposes, was strenuously opposes with the advent of the solar monotheistic religions, and those who clung to the old ways were effectively extinguished. The wholesale slaughter of those called witches, right? The Salem, Jerusalem witch hunt. They are hunting down us for our magic, but they also contain magic, but their magic ain't, you know, uh, primal magic. They have to tap in to something prime and primal. You are the dragon, so your your magic's different. You don't got to tap into Leviathan. You are Leviathan, my naga. They got to tap in from the outside in. I'm talking the ancient ones, right? So-called, but you don't get no more ancient than a why. This frequency, Melchizedek frequency. Who is Presta John? Who is the Magi? The wholesale slaughter of those witches during the Inquisition is an example of this, as well as the solemn and twisted, that is to say, purposeless enlightenment, celibacy that the church espoused. For the Orgon of Wilhelm Reich is just as much Leviathan as the Kundalini of Tantric Adepts and the power raised raised by the witches. It has always, at least in the past 2000 years, been associated with the occultism and essentially with rites of evil magic and the forbidden magic of the enemy and of Satan and the twisting sacred spiral formed by the serpent of the Caduceus and by the spinning of the galaxies, <laughs> dodge all hijack. It also is also the same Leviathan as the spiral of the biologist's code of life DNA. Whoa, for the dismount. They tapping into our spiral. Our biology, our DNA is the dragon. They call it a serpent, but they just said it's a dragon. It's still a dragon. The dragon, which is you, the spiral, the frequency, the flow, which is you, the energy that is you. We're talking Levi, which means we're talking priesthood because Levi are the priests. Leviathan, spiral is what they're tapping into. While you sleep, they tap it into your spine. They're tapping into our spiral. Who? <laughs> Whoever they're calling the mad air, bang. <laughs> the mad air is showing them the way to tap in, right? Tap in the old Leviathan and the Old Testament. Yeah, they tapping in, man. The mad air, this person called the mad air, is tapping in. The tribes represented by the mad air, the elder gods, the ancient ones are tapping in. And who's the mad air? Oh, yeah. Their prophet. Doing the necromancy. In addition to the introduction, the book uses a frame story called the testimony of the mad arab the testimony is in two parts forming a prologue and epilogue to the core necronomicon the author describes himself as a mad arab the prologue explains how the arab first came to discover the dark secrets whoa talking moab managa for the dismount that he is recording accidentally witnessing an arcane ritual performed by a cult that worships Tiamat or the dragon of life. <laughs> but they're tapping into it with the wrong intention in which both demons, yada, 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 are conjured 
In the epilogue, the mad Arab is haunted by premonitions of his gruesome death. He recognizes that the horrors of the Necromicon are enraged and seek revenge upon him for revealing their existence to the world. Whoa. That's why he's mad, son. Tell him why he's mad, son. The mad Arab is mad because they hunting him down. I'm like, whoa, you over here blowing up our spot, revealing our existence to the world. The text is littered with non sequiturs and arcane incantations presented as indignation or an indication of his unstable mental state and his desire to protect himself from perceived danger. He is unstable to sign his work and thus remains nameless. So apparently he wasn't able to finish it because he went crazy. Much of the book is a collection of magical rituals, conjurations, you know what I'm saying? So we're going to, you know, not dig on the incantations, but, you know, dig more on it. And all this, all their guys are represent. They're still representing this Murdoch flow, right? There's this leader of the elder gods, right? Because they're the elder gods. Because <laughs> he slew the dragon. Whoa. Whoa. Who's the queen of the ancient ones? Clove her body in two and created the heaven and earth and from two halves. The elder gods are created mankind, also created mankind, kind of man. A lot from uh, the blood of another ancient one. All right. Other ancient ones are imprisoned beneath the earth or heavens, beyond the heavens, with the exception of the term elder gods and ancient ones, which are first popularized by the fiction of Lovecraft. Many of these stories are derived from authentic myths, ancient ones and elder ones, man. <laughs> and that's all they were talking about. When they talk about, you know, this Necromicron, these elders, man, the ancient ones. Remember, man, the elder ones are the Morris Science Temple and the ancient ones are the Masonic lineage of the great seal of Moorish affairs. I think we see in clear. Yeah, they made treaties, man. They made treaties, my naga. They made treaties. They made treaties to protect their secrets, not just to step on our head bone, but to make sure that they get ultimate power as much as they could from their science of geometry. They're more science. The elder gods. The ancient guys. All of them hijacking the original autochthonous creation of Hawa. Frequency. They're summoning dragons. Ones that were fallen. Not all dragons, you know, were able to rise. Some fell. And this elder ancient situation connects with the Babylonian situation, connects with the Mesopotamian situation, and what they call Mesopotamian monsters. <sighs> we just had to show that this frequency is real, that they put on the head bone of the Kumse. This is why they couldn't try, but this is why they were migrating, son. <laughs> And this is why they mad, son. But we're just talking about the mad Arab. Not Arab proper. <laughs> nah. When I think Arab, I think Carib, like Caribbean, you know? Like Kara, like the Kara Katai. And these hijacks hijack every title possible they make treaties and article treaties to back us back from the wall 
hijack city. When we know <laughs> that these noggins get more swarthy in America, the race is darken as we approach the polls, man. Hey, we surfing a wave in Presta, John installment number 95, my noggin. Hey, get up in the drop shop. Keep surfing the wave with a Naga. Help us build for Nagaville. Don't stop. We got 20,000 arrays. Let's get all the way across and start getting our paint up and start getting more projects going. This is the beginning, but you come over here with a dub with $20 every week, every month. My Naga, we're going to build extremely fast with 500 cold keepers. So, Coach Club, hey, hey, high five eyes, what they do, man. Get that reconstruction pack so you in the vibration because it's a frequency war and we need our vibration. This this uh, music is in 432. This tribe of music is in 432. We're in the frequency of the spiral again. They can't hijack us no more. <laughs> Yo, self, the real nice spiral reconstruction pack. Hey, my pack, what will they do? Enjoy world. You get your my pack. This is Ma's music, man. Hey, get your press to pack, man. Get all the drop. Everything's happening in here, man. Because we inmate Joe E. KTC. Tripping in that mem sauce. Most high over everything. <laughs> Five eyes, we out of here, man. We popping off and we taking off. And, you know, you've been continuing, man, to keep the flow of comments coming in hot, coming in strong. Fuego, hey, have yourself falls. China, Chan, Khan, Chan, Khan. Yeah, the Antarctic Treaty, the Antarctic Treaty has never been broken. My naga. He said, I wonder if the rulers of the world keep going to Antarctica to legitimatize, to legitimatize, legitimatize. <laughs> Their status as rulers. It makes sense to me. Don't all the presidents got to go to Antarctica, man? Somebody over there acting like the press, they're giving them legitimization as a ruler. Amar Khan's what it do, hey. Can you say Arc La Tex? Arc La Tex, hey, man. Amar Khan popping off. Eternal love, keep lighting. The M H O E. Ralph Lawson, what it do. Y'all got me to drop Jesus, and I only call on Hawaii with a blessing. Hey, I'm JB. We all popping off, man. Right? So many questions. The Antarctic Treaty definitely got everybody helping to keep it closed off. Can't agree on nothing else when it comes to world problems, but they can all agree. Not just anybody should be able to visit Antarctica. Great comment. Al he's Han. TV. Hope I'm saying that right. Alizani TV. All right. Terrence McKellen, what it do, brother? Think on this. Mercedes. Mercedes. Mercedes, the black German invention, which they stole from the Indian. Hey, we talked about that German map, that Antarctica flow, that Mercedes. That's crazy. Rory Gibson, more I stew on it. Sounds more like the bearing story told in reverse, much like everything taught is backwards of what the creator decrees instead of going down we went up popping out of antarctica but remember antarctica surrounds us where's up <laughs> leona abbott says i'm not playing i'm watching this show on slow-mo i'm watching this on so my sister's watching this chopped and screwed you want that chopped and screwed man <laughs> go get that chopped and screwed out the drop shop man <laughs> them packs is chopped and screwed man um the reconstruction pack, man. Hey, it's gonna have the detox links. It's gonna have uh, the drop, the shows from Nine Spiral and yourself with the videos, as well as the music. And there's an entire part of the album that's chopped and screwed. I mean, the full album's been chopped and screwed, as well. So you got both versions available on the reconstruction pack. And these are flash drives to preserve our information, man. Like time capsules, man. You surfing the wave, you got the drop and the press the investigation. Click the link below and make sure you got it all, man, and get it all here. We added a uh, 94. Okay, cool, 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 cool. 
For the children of Israel shall dwell many days without a king or a prince, without sacrifice or pillar, without ephah or household gods, no idols. Afterwards, the children of Israel shall return, seek Hawa and Dawi, who was pressed to John. And they shall come trembling to Hawa, to his goodness in the latter days. And hey, your comments keep us going, Ahab, Leona, Abbey. Y'all keep us going, man. My sister's <laughs> watching this, all these joints in slow motion, man. <laughs> Taking me right into Shabbat where I can watch the next video, Preston 94. I watch it. I'm looking forward to it. Keep dropping the drop. Thank you, most high. Be blessed. Hey, now you got to watch 94. Now you got to really catch up. We out of here, man. Hey, wow, bro. Got my mind wandering all day. Uh, immediately downloaded an image of this map. I'll look on my laptop because it's very blurry on my phone. Also switched to 432 Hertz on Appleton TV, Appleton Live and been able to make much better music. I can hear the difference, man. My bro's producing it at 432. We want all our producers to switch your frequency up and tune up with a naga. Hey, how the truth will set you free. Your comments are setting us free. Yeah, you know I mean, Hawa is setting us free. So now we can see clearly that we're not alone. They made a treaty for a reason. And we are melting the ice with dragon fire. I'm talking fuego. You know what I'm saying? All praise to Juan, the water to you for tuning in to the 95th installment of the Preston John Investigation. I'm about to make some flapjacks, kick it with my droplets, and you keep surfing the wave. And remember, stay up, suit up, choose up. Allah wa